Hello, my dear friends. Today, let us have a discussion on the topic Health Appraisal, Prevention of Communicable Diseases, Remedial Measures, and Follow-up. In the introduction, first of all, let's see how the school health services was born in India. The school health services in India dates back to 1909. A medical examination of the school children was carried out in Baroda city for the first time during this period. The board committee, which was established in 1946, reported that school health services were practically absent in India and if present, they were in an underdeveloped state. In 1953, the Secondary Education Committee emphasized the need for medical examination of students and school feeding program. In 1960, the government of India constituted a school health committee to assess standard of health and nutrition school children and suggested ways and the means to improve them. In 1961, the committee submitted its reports which contains many useful recommendations. During the past five years plan, many state government have provided for school health and school feeding program. What the school health service provided was hardly more than a token service because of the shortage of resources and insufficient facilities. School health is an important branch of community health. The aspect of school health service according to modern concepts are an economical and powerful means of raising community health and more importantly for future generations. The school health service is also a personal health service. It has developed during the last hundred years from the narrow concept of medical examination of children to the present day broader concept of comprehensive care of the health and well-being of the children throughout the school years. Under National Rural Health Mission, NRHM, or National Health Mission, NHM, the school health program is a program for school health services, which has been necessitated and launched in fulfilling the vision of NRHM or NHM to provide effective health care to the population throughout the country. It also focuses on effective integration of the health concern through decentralized management at district with determinants of health like sanitation, hygiene, nutrition, safe drinking water, gender and social concern. The school health program intends to cover 28,750 government and private aided schools covering around 22 crore students all over India. Rationally of the school health program. The school health program is the only public sector program specially focused on school aged children. Its main focus is to address the health needs of children, both physical and mental. In addition, it also provides nutrition intervention, yoga facilities, and counseling. It responds to an increased need, increased efficacy in children's development. 
it ensures good current and future health, better education outcomes, and improves social equity. The health problems of school children vary from one place to another. Surveys carried out in India indicates that the main emphasis will fall in the following categories A. Malnutrition, B. Infectious diseases, C. Intestinal parasites, D. Diseases of skin, eyes, and ears, E. Mental health, F. Dental health. The objective of the program of the school health services are A. The promotion of positive health, B. The prevention of diseases, C. Early diagnosis, treatment, and follow up of the defects, D. Awakening health consciousness in children, E. The provision of healthy environment. Aspects of school health service. The tasks of school health service are many four and vary according to local priorities, where resources are plentiful. Special school health services may be developed. Some aspects of the school health service are as follows. Number one, health appraisals of school children and school personnel. Two, remedial measures and follow-up. Number three, prevention of communicable diseases. Number four, healthy school environment. Number five, nutritional services. Number six, first aid and emergency care. Number seven, mental health. Number eight, dental health. Number nine, eye health. Number 10, health education. 11, education of handicapped children. Number 12, proper maintenance and use of school health records. Health appraisals. A health appraisal is an evaluation of an individual's health performed to gather information about both his current physical fitness as well as his risk of developing various medical conditions. While a health appraisal can bear many similarities to a physical examination, it tends to place more emphasis on future medical risks than a traditionally physical examination does. Periodic health appraisals are often mandatory for students and may also be offered by one's employer. Some health appraisal providers offer follow-up support service which assist individuals in controlling their risk of developing a certain medical condition in the future. The health appraisal should cover not only the students but also the teachers and other school personnel. Introduction to school health is a challenge to children entering school. It can be viewed from the following three categories. They are number A, health behavior influenced by teachers and classmates. Number B, children are prone to variety of ailments. Number C, accidents may lead to permanent deformity or handicap both physically and mentally. Hence, the need for watchfulness by the school teachers is required. The goals for the health appraisals are number A, to prepare children to adopt healthy behaviors. Number B, to help children to become healthy and useful citizens. Strategies 
some strategies for the health appraisals are as follows number a regular medical checkup for early detection and the prompt treatment edpt number b protection against preventable diseases through vaccination c health and the population education program in school d ensuring healthy school environment for example safe drinking water sanitation food hygiene extent prevention e nutrition education and nutritional supplements for example wips wfs weekly iron folic supplementation and deworming by manually that means twice in a year f adolescents friendly health services or rksk rashtriya kishor swasthya karyakram from class 6 to 12 standard prevention of communicable diseases now let us discuss something about the communicable diseases communicable diseases are all illness due to a specific infectious agent or its toxic products capable of being directly or indirectly transmitted from human to human animal to animal animal to human or from the environment through air does soil water food etc to human or animal some of the important communicable diseases are as follows number 1 air brown or droplet infection through respiratory tracts for example tuberculosis or tb measles mumps rubella influenza type a ice one and was that is what we used to know swine flu type a ice five and one this is bird flu and the type b it affects to the human influenza diphtheria whooping cup this is parthesis number 2 intestinal infection and infestation for example poliomyelitis viral hepatitis cholera acute diarrheal diseases typhoid fever food poisoning amebiasis round worm hookworm infestation number 3 insects or arthropod borne infections for example dengue malaria filariasis number 4 zoonosis that is transmitted from animal to human in the viral infection for example rabies japanese encephalitis and bacterial infection salmonellosis black scrub typhus etc number 5 true body contacts for example tetanus leprosy trachoma hti that is sexually transmitted infections hiv and aids etc some of the communicable diseases are vaccine preventable under the nis national immunization schedule vaccination program are held for nine vaccine preventable diseases in short bpd they are name of the disease name of the vaccines number 1 childhood tb tuberculosis name of the vaccine is bcg number 2 poliomyelitis opb number 3 diphtheria dpt number 4 pertussis dpt number 5 tanus dpt or titanus toxoid number 6 measles measles number 7 hepatitis b hep b number 8 japanese encephalitis je number 9 Hemophilus influenza subtype B, which causes meningitis, hip HIV. A newer vaccine, pentavalent, which consists of five diseases: diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, plus hep B, plus hip. Will be introduced shortly in Manipur during 2015. Now let us try to understand what is Mission Indradhanush. Mission Indradhanush is a mission program projected for 5 years 
2015 to 2020 as an additional immunization program for mothers and the children above the NIS. Where low coverage area, left out, hard to reach area, difficult to reach areas, etc. are to be covered in a phase-wise manner. Mission Indradhanus, which is also known as Rainbow Mission, is taking seven colors of the rainbow as symbol of the seven vaccine preventable diseases in short BPD. The seven diseases are diphtheria, pertussis, measles, childhood tuberculosis, hepatitis B, tetanus, and poliomyelitis. A total of 201 districts throughout India have been identified for low coverage in Manipur for districts, namely Suchanpur, Tamenglong, Senapati, and Ukrul are identified for the mission in the Dhanus. Immunization of school children. Immunization of school children is a must because vaccination control vaccine preventable diseases at primary school and help children to control communicable diseases. Required vaccination program at school are A, five to six years, Injection tetanus toxoid booster, TPT booster. B, 10 years, injection tetanus toxoid booster. C, 16 years, injection tetanus toxoid booster and other vaccines as per need. Now, let us see how the steps should be taken up for immunization of school children. Number one, inform parents on importance of vaccination and death of school for vaccination program. Number two, prepare class-wise list of students needing vaccination. Three, arrange a well-lighted room. Four, arrange facilities for hand washing. Number five, keep children in order and ready for vaccination. Number six, entry in appropriate column of school health card after vaccination. A record of all immunizations should be maintained as part of the school health records. When the child leaves school, the health record should accompany him. Now, let us see how to maintain the school health card. Number one, keep all health cards up to date. Number two, ensure accuracy while entering. Number three, store cards class-wise and section-wise. Number four, when students finish primary schooling, the card should be handed over to then, number five, always treat cards records as confidential. Number six, well-maintained cards can help in future references for records. Remedial measures and follow-up. Medical examinations are not an end in themselves. They should be followed by appropriate treatment and follow-up. Special clinics should be conducted exclusively for school children at the primary health centers in the rural areas and in one of the selected schools or dispensaries for a group of about 5,000 children in the urban areas. The clinic days and the time should be intimated 
to all the concerned schools, considering the high prevalences of dental, eye, ear, nose, and throat defects in the school children in India. Special clinics should be provided for the exclusive use of school children for examination and treatment of such defects. In the big cities, the required number of specialists should be employed in the school health service. There should be provisions for beds in the existing referral hospitals for children to be admitted for investigation and treatment as and when required. In the conclusion, now we can conclude the discussions with the message that school health is an important branch of community health. According to modern concept, school health service is an economical and a powerful means of raising community health and more importantly, for future generations. The school health service is a personal health service. The concept of medical examination of children to the present day broader concept of comprehensive care of the health and well-being of the children throughout the school year is to live in dignity with healthy and productive life.